Welcome to part two of the Johnson Viking 2 transmitter checkout and repair here at D-Lab Electronics. In part one, the radio was delivered here from a fellow ham operator. He didn't think that it actually operated. He said it had been off the air for at least 10 years. Well, come to find out it powered up. I had output and modulation. However, there are some issues with the power supply and the push to talk circuit. I'll show you that again, and that's what I'm going to correct in this video. We'll clean it up, check it again. Here we go. Well, here's the Viking 2, which has already been checked out initially, and it is operational. This big old resistor roid that you see here should not be here. It looks like maybe a 200 watt resistor, which was strapped topside, replacing a 50 watt adjustable resistor that should be under the chassis. So this is going to be removed. Let's go bottom side and I'll show you what's going to happen there. All right, here we are bottom side. That big resistor I showed you should be sitting here. In its place is this big ice cube relay, which they're using for push to talk. But unfortunately, it puts about 100 volts on the mic connector. So I'm going to get this out of here, put a stock resistor in its place, and put in a safe push to talk system. The other thing we're going to do is somebody's been in here playing with the modulation section. We're going to take all this out, return it to stock, also rebuild the audio circuitry here, and get this thing talking the way it should. Also, I have some cleanup to do over here in the power supply. You can see this massive capacitor strapped in here, some wire nuts, some other cool stuff. We're going to try to put all that back to stock and retest. So I'm going to start top side. Just get this big Poseidon adventure out of here. Get this wiring out of here. Clean it up. Then we'll go bottom side, do the same thing. Take the print for this transmitter and put it back the way it should be. All right, I got a little Pigasaurus out from the top. Next, just going to clip this stuff out of here. No reason for me to document any of this because I plan to put it back as close as I can to the stock configuration, which I know will work. Anytime I unmod, that's fairly easy, right? Because you just remove and replace. Once I get all this stuff out of the way, putting it back to the stock configuration will be a piece of cake. And I've worked on so many of these that I pretty much know the Viking 2 like the back of my hand. It's my favorite transmitter. All right, there's the stock resistor back where it should be. These two yellow wires that were extended go here. These guys go to the slide. And these two purple ones go to this end of the resistor. Also notice that this cap is broke loose. Doesn't matter, I'm gonna change it anyway. And there has been some magic going on here. In the VFO area, looks like somebody was like trimming something, and I just noticed we've got some cooked wiring. See that green wire? It's been baking. There's a gigantic bubble in the insulation under there. I know it's kind of hard to see. So obviously, at one time, some of the wiring to the VFO must have been shorted and baked that wire. So yeah, I got my work cut out for me here, guys. Okay. The 20K resistor is reinstalled. I had to extend the wiring here out of the harness so that this arm can sweep back and forth on the taps. Okay, it was too short before. Now I need to figure out what is this, right? So this was the coil supply voltage going to that old push to talk relay. I got over here and I was taking a look and I see some magic, right? There's a couple of diodes there, very cool. Maybe go over here, there's like a big clump of caps. 
So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get this out of my way, see what that is, correct it, and get rid of these. All right, I want to show you this before I yanked it out of here. So there's a little terminal board with a bunch of caps and these diodes, I believe, he was stealing filament voltage off the 6AL5 to drive the coil of that push to talk system. So this whole terminal board and mess will leave. I'll dress it up, get some new caps in here, and we'll go from there. All right, quite a bit has transpired. I cleaned up the power supply. We have new caps in, negative bias caps going to the 6AL5. All that other craziness has been removed. Modulator resistor is in place. New cap there. I'm at the point right now that I want to fire it up and just check the power supplies. All right, we're pretty safe at this point. Push to talk is all disabled, floating in the breeze, okay? So all I want to pretty much do is fire it up and make sure that my low voltage power supplies are working. So we should see somewhere around 300 here and we got the negative bias here off the 6AL5. So I'm simply going to turn on the filament switch. I'm not going to turn on the high voltage. Okay. That's another thing that's really nice about the Viking 2. Is you can do these checks without having to actually key the transmitter. So there's my low voltage supply. Looks good. This is my negative voltage supply coming off the 6AL5, negative 90, negative 84. Those are high because we're not transmitting, so we're not pulling current from the finals or the modulators. Yes. And, then and then I would like to fire up the transmitter, adjust the modulator current, and see how well it modulates. Also see that we're missing some hardware here on the choke. See down there? So I'm going to repair that. Then we're actually going to fire it up, adjust things up, and see how it performs. So the power supply is pretty secure at this point. You can see the new filter caps installed there, nice and neat. I've also put in the D-Lab K1 push-to-talk module. So I need to get that wired in, and then we'll give this thing an initial test and set the modulator current. So the new push-to-talk system is installed. Now I want to correct these two 10K resistors going over to this added terminal board. I've got an original 20K to put in this place. I also have to go over here and fix the old nutty wire nut job. All right, I think we're at the point where we can go ahead and test it. I still have not cleaned up this craziness in the crystal selector, but I did change out this resistor here, which should be a 68K. Somebody had the series trio going, trying to accomplish the same thing. We still do have the melted uh, 6 volt AC wiring, but I'm not going to worry about that at this point. I just want to see if the power supply is operating properly. All right, here we go. Initial tune up, I'm on 80 meters. Using the VFO. There's my buffer. There's my grid, plenty of that. I've got the push to talk hooked up. Check that modulator current because that is what would be affected with the new resistor I put in underneath. How about I put it in phone? There we go. You can see we're about at 40 mils. They want it between 50 to 70. I always go on the lower side of that but she's modulating, but not well over 100 watts. Plenty of forward modulation. Okay, so I just need to go underneath, tweak up the modulator current. All right, to adjust the modulator current, you just adjust this little tap on the resistor resistoroid. Slide him a little bit. Clamping back down. Don't reef on this because those little wire wound elements are about the size of your hair. So 
So if you get all crazy about it, you can break that resistor and that's like a $30 mistake. Okay, let's recheck the current. I've still got the Viking on its side. Looks like I'm around uh, 70 mils. A little higher than I want to be. Tweak it again. All right, moved to about an eighth of an inch towards the front panel. As you go away from the front panel, the current increases. Of course, towards the front panel, it goes down. So I'm about uh, 55 to 60 mils. Kind of where I want to be. Okay, good deal. Now remember, if you do any changes in the audio section, if you replace your modulator tubes, etc., you have to readjust that modulator current. Always keep an eye on that because if you're running it too high, you'll eat your 807s. Alright, so that wraps up the power supply repair of the Johnson Viking 2. The next thing I'm going to do is repair the modulation section, including the preamp. Okay, so that will be in part two. So here is where we're going to work next. Right in there. Interstage transformer. And you get to hear my dog smelling the radio.